Now, finally, a little over an hour into the piece, I'm using a little bit smaller brush to get some of these smaller touches of value. And, uh, you know, I throw them in again and go through that process of little touches in the context of these bigger, broader strokes. And then I decide how many of those little touches I leave in and how many I take out. So it's definitely not just put every little touch that I put in there and leave it in. I want to only uh, leave the ones that really help uh, just complete an area. I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on this particular highlight. It's an important one. And as that bowl, before it uh, turns over to the side there, there's uh, uh, kind of a key moment where it, it's reflecting some of the light that is the light source that I'm, I'm lighting this whole scene with. And, and so it just takes time to build that up because ultimately it's going to have quite a bit of thick paint on that area. And so I kind of put it in there and then soften it back out and it's a balance between you know these really hard thick strokes and some of the softer nuance that's kind of right next to it. 
One of the things with building up those kinds of uh, key highlights, uh, I've had a lot of practice also with uh, the headlights of cars and or street signs. So in a street scene, there's a very similar kind of process that you have to go through. Or if you're painting the sun and actually including it in a scene that you're painting, uh, you know, how do you depict the sun? So, um, and the way that I like to do it is having some more saturated color right next to more thicker opaque color that's lighter that that represents the sun so there's the sun part or you know it could be a highlight in this case or a car light and different type of painting and the the main area or the center is always a thicker uh, impasto type white but then you have some saturated color right next to it that's a, a step down in value and then it's just the way those two things interact together that makes the highlight work. Now this little slice of apple, it's important that I put part of it in shadow. And one of the reasons is it's so bright and light that if I didn't have a transition value from the general shadow that's around it, um, it would stick out too much. And so that little cast shadow that's being placed on it from the half of the apple is an important way to help it blend into its environment or become part of it a little bit more. So there's an important lesson here. And that is when you have really bright objects, you really want to make sure that there's a part of those bright objects. And this could be uh, in any sort of situation, landscape or cityscape as well. If you have something that's really bright, make sure that part of it is in shadow so that it can uh, blend better with the whole subject. And you'll see people do that with figures as well, where uh, some of the background color is very close or closer in value with something that's on the figure. And there's an area where those two shapes, both background and the figure can uh, blend together in some parts because you don't want a single object to just feel cut out from the rest of the piece.
Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is go beyond some of the major planes and work on some of the nuances and the nuances in these uh, smaller plane changes. And that necessitates uh, little slight uh, adjustments of color and value in order to get things to turn a little bit or recede just a little bit more. So it's all about developing some of the subtleties here and refining some of these shapes. So I'm cutting back into areas that are not quite working or don't have enough elegance in their shape and in their form. So really paying attention to the boundaries of these shapes and making sure that they're working in appropriate hardness and softness. So building all that nuance into it.